and welcome to this video on sustainability energy and matter this is for OCRB Salters my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and like I say this video is going to be looking at this topic but it's going to be in a revision format so it's basically just an overview of what you need to know in terms of content uh, obviously for this um, ozone story uh, topic in OCRP Salters. Now the slides that I'm using here, um, they are specifically for Salters um, and they are great for revision and can be purchased. So if you just click on the description box, um, uh, click on the link, sorry, in the description box, you'll be able to go a hold of them there. They're really great value for money and actually you can get the full series of AS at a discount as well. Um, so um, feel free to have a look on there, really help you to get that top grade in chemistry. Okay, it's all, it all helps after all. Okay, so uh, like I say, this is specifically related to these specification points um, taken from the specification in the syllabus for the um, ozone story. Okay, so let's look at ozone. So ozone is broken down and it's reformed in the stratosphere. Okay, so the formation of ozone. So ozone is a protective layer found in the stratosphere. That's the upper part of the atmosphere. It's quite high up. Uh, and it's formed when UV radiation from the sun hits an oxygen molecule. Okay, so it's quite good this because actually instead of talking about breaking up and destroying ozone, we're saying, right, well, how is it made? So it can be remade after it's been destroyed. And basically the UV radiation, uh, normally write it as, um, as this here. So you might see it written like that absorbed by the oxygen molecules to form O atoms. Um, these are also known as O dot free radicals. So sometimes you can just see them written as uh, two different ways. Okay, so these form oxygen atoms. And then the oxygen atom, what this does, it reacts with oxygen, O2 molecule, to form ozone, which is O3. So it's probably one of the easiest equations I think you'll see in the world. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, nothing too complicated there. But... Ozone can be broken down as well. Okay, so we take this ozone and we take um, this uh, uh, UV radiation in particular uh, and this splits it back into O2 and O. So effectively it's a reversible reaction. So because of this reversible reaction, um, we actually have it in equilibrium. And so yes, it's broken up, but it's reformed. So this equilibrium reaction happens in well up high into the stratosphere of the Earth. Okay, so <coughs> the ozone layer is really, really important because it protects us from harmful UV radiation from the sun. Remember, the UV isn't good for us um, in terms of too much of it, should we say. Uh, obviously, we do need some UV, as you'll find out in a minute. Okay, so basically, ozone absorbs most types of UV radiation from the sun. There's three main types, UVA, UVB, and UVC, so they've been very creative with their names there. Uh, basically, as we um, tend towards UVC, uh, we've got more energy and we've got a higher frequency. Okay, so UVC is the worst UV radiation in terms of damage for humans. Now, UVA, 5% is absorbed by the ozone. Uh, UVB, 90% is absorbed. And UVC, 100% is absorbed. So thankfully, if the ozone layer is there, it will absorb all of this really harmful UVC radiation. Now, UVA, most of the radiation that reaches us is actually UVA. Um, very little of it is absorbed by the ozone layer. Uh, and actually, this can cause skin cancer. Um, what it does, it damages our DNA in the cell and accelerates the aging process. So by uh, exposing yourself to lots of UVA radiation, you actually damage some of the cell structures and you are at higher risk of, uh, of getting skin cancer. And obviously, it does age the skin uh, quicker as well. UVB, 10% of UVB actually reaches us. Uh, this can also lead to DNA damage. Obviously, it is just as bad as, uh, it is worse, sorry, than UVA. So if this does reach us, it will cause some serious damage, may lead to skin cancer. It This is, UVB is the main type of UV that causes sunburn. So if you are burnt by the sun, it will be UVB that's caused that burning. And again, just like UVA, it does accelerate um, the aging of the skin as well. So it's the UVB you really want to protect against because that isn't very good. It's not all bad news though. Like I say, UVB is or UV is needed, sorry, to produce vitamin D, um, and that's needed to use for your body to use calcium effectively to develop strong bones. If you don't have vitamin D or you have a deficiency of vitamin D, you may have um, 
issues with your bones and the strength of the bones and the formation of the bones. So it is important. We do need some UV. Uh, and also UV tans the skin as well. It helps protect the deeper tissues underneath from the effects of radiation. So if you have darker skin, um, that the pigmentation in that skin will help to protect you against some of the most harmful UV uh, radiation. So if you're quite fair skinned, as some of you may know, um, that you, uh, you'll you burn probably easier than people who are um, slightly darker skinned. Okay, so let's have a look at photochemical smog, since we're on this story of ozone. Now ozone, it is good in that it can protect us from some of those harmful UV, but it's good in the stratosphere. The problem is ozone can be formed at lower levels, and that is bad, okay? So this is why. So ozone in the lowest level of the atmosphere, which is called the troposphere, that's the bit that we can, uh, that we obviously are in contact with. Um, this exists as sunlight, hydrocarbons, and nitrogen dioxide. These will mix and form ozone in these lower levels. Now a great deal of these hydrocarbons and nitrogen dioxides, they do come from cars and factories. <coughs> so obviously if we have a lot of them, um, this is gonna pose a problem. So when these solid carbon particulates and ozone, when they mix, um, this forms photochemical smog. Uh, and you can see this is a picture of um, a, an image from what was then the World Trade Towers in New York. Uh, and this was obviously some of the photochemical smog in New York um, and you can see it's very hazy and you can barely see through it um, but this is an example it's not just normal smog which is caused by uh, water water droplet water vapor this is photochemical this is actually pollution now photochemical smog this obviously harms the respiratory system it's not very good it damages animals and all animals uh, and obviously damages plants as well so it's not great and ozone is toxic to humans. So not alone the photochemical smog, just the ozone on its own isn't good. We shouldn't really be breathing it in, um, and that is a problem. And obviously all of this is created by or accelerated vastly by the use of cars and factories. Okay, so we're looking at obviously gas concentrations, for example, ozone, and scientists can measure and monitor the amount of gas levels in the air um, by using something called gas concentrations. Uh, and these are normally measured as a percentage of concentrations or parts per million. And you might have seen these quite a bit. So these can be represented as a percentage concentration by volume. And you might have seen bits of these already. So this is gases in dry air. So we've removed all the water from it. Now you can see here that we've got nitrogen, oxygen, argon and other gases that obviously make up the, uh, the atmosphere. So other will include things like carbon dioxide in there. Now, approximately 21% of dry air is made up of oxygen. Uh, this means there's uh, 21 particles of oxygen in 100 particles. So obviously it's 21 out of 100. Uh, there's many more gases that make up the atmosphere, however. Um, but there's a, a basically as a percentage, they're really, really small. Okay, so it's not practical really to measure them as a percentage. Obviously with oxygen, it's fine, we've got so much of it. So what we can do is we measure these in parts per million instead. It's a far more practical way. So here's an example. The percentage composition of hydrogen, you can see what I mean, is 0.000055%. Really, really, really small percentage. I mean, it's ridiculous, really, using numbers like that. So what we can do is we express this in a different way. So its concentration in parts per million is dead easy. All we say is that in 100 parts of air, we have 0 0.000055 parts of hydrogen um, per one part of air, because remember this is out of a percentage. So um, all we do is we do um, 0 0.000055 divided by 100, and that will get us that many parts of hydrogen in a million parts of air, okay? So all we do is we just divide that by 100, okay? And we get it into a million parts of air. Um, uh, sorry, in one part of air, sorry, this is one part of air, not in a million. So this is in one part of air. So if we have 100 parts, obviously that's how much we have in 100 parts. In one part, obviously we just divide it by 100 to get one part. But in a million parts of air, there's too many zeros you see here, uh, then all we do is we do um, 0.000055. This is basically in one part of air. And we just times that by a million. And that will give us the number in a million parts. So here you can see we've got 0.55 parts per million. So all we're doing is we're taking the percentage, okay? That tells us what there is in 100 parts of the air 
If we divide that, that number by 100, we find out what one part is, and then we multiply by a million to find out what it is in uh, parts per million. You see this number is a little bit easier to read than that number. Okay, radiation in the atmosphere. So the Earth's atmosphere absorbs some of the radiation produced by the sun. And see uh, that we've got our uh, EM spectrum here, and we start from radio waves at one end, gamma rays at the other. Gamma rays have got much higher energy. So you can see here as we're going across, increase in energy, increase in frequency, so the wavelength is getting shorter of the radiation. Now in this section, the infrared, visible light, and ultraviolet, nuclear fusion occurs in the sun and emits this type of radiation. Um, now obviously we know what the sun is and we know that it's very hot so that's the infrared bit. We can see the sun obviously because that's the visible light and the ultraviolet we feel the effects of the ultraviolet from the sun. That's obviously causes burning uh, on our hands. It's not actually infrared that causes the burning um, it's the ultraviolet the invisible UV light that causes the burning uh, on the skin. Now the atmosphere absorbs some of this infrared and it absorbs most of the ultraviolet as we've seen before. Uh, but the radiation is also absorbed by the surface of the Earth as well. Uh, and then this is obviously re-emitted back as infrared at a lower frequency. So we get warming of that Earth. Um, and basically this is uh, emitted back obviously at night. It gets cooler and a lot of that heat starts to escape at night. But during the day when it's nice and warm... Um, well, maybe it's not if you're in Britain, but sometimes we do have the occasional hot day in Britain, don't we? Um, basically, we heat the, we heat the Earth, and the, the Earth can absorb some of that infrared, uh, some of that heat, and some of this radiation that's being given out, and then the, ra the Earth radiates that back at a lower frequency, which is infrared. Okay, let's look at some uh, breaking bonds using UV and visible light. So oxygen free radicals, these are produced when energy is transferred to electrons. So electrons, remember, um, you would have seen in the previous topics, um, that they sit in discrete energy levels, okay? Uh, and these electrons can move to another energy level if they absorb the right amount of energy, okay? It's got to be the right amount that matches that energy gap. Remember, these energy levels are also known as quantized energy levels. So if we've got UV or visible light that hits the gas molecule, the electrons absorb this energy and they move up to that higher energy level. So we know that bit already from the previous topics. But as the levels have fixed energy, only a, sp only a specific frequency will actually be absorbed. Okay, We can't absorb any frequency and it will excite the electron. It has to be just right. It's a bit like the three little bears. Not too hot, not too cold just right okay so this is basically how you get these electrons excited into these higher energy levels okay so if the right energy is absorbed uh, the bonds break and they're forming um, these free radicals that are created okay so let's have a look here's an oxygen molecule o2 the perfect right amount of energy just to get that electron excited into the upper level breaks that bond and we form these oxygen free radicals produced Remember the O bit here, the oxygen atom, is also the same as a radical as well. So the oxygen atom is the same as an O dot radical. And this is obviously can be used to create the formation of ozone, as we've seen before. Okay, so obviously we're talking about this energy being absorbed. We've got to be able to calculate it as well. So remember, energy and frequency are related to each other. Again, we've seen this in a previous topic. It's just like a recap, really. So we've got energy in joules. H is Planck's constant, uh, 6.63 times by 10 to the minus 34 joules per hertz. And frequency um, is obviously given it in the value of hertz. So let's have a look at an example how we can use this equation. Calculate the energy given to a molecule by UV radiation of frequency 2.3 times by 10 to the 15 hertz. So all we do is we take E, which is the energy, Planck's constant, times by the frequency that we've been given, make sure it's in the right units, which it is, 2.3 times 10 to the 15. In this example, the energy is 1.52 times by 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now, obviously, we can have a look at a different equation as well. Uh, we've got frequency, this bit here, can be calculated by taking the speed of light in meters per second. Remember all that radiation in a vacuum that we've just seen before in the EM spectrum travel at three times 10 to the eight meters per second and wavelength is in meters. Now obviously we can um, calculate the frequency as well um, from this if we have the wavelength 
and then we can use that to work out the energy. So um, it's pretty straightforward, really. So, but you'll always be given Planck's constant and the speed of light in your data sheet. So please look out for it. You don't have to remember it. Okay, so obviously these two equations can be combined, and we can squash them. And it makes it a bit easier. It's his science, after all, we'll try and simplify things, uh, and we're going to see what they can combine to. Okay, so let's combine these, and we form this. So pretty handsome equation. So again, obviously we know what the parts are. E is energy, H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, and lambda is obviously wavelength in meters. So let's use it and let's put an example in. Calculate the energy, which is this bit, given to a molecule by UV radiation of wavelength 3.6 times by 10 to the minus 7 meters. Okay, so let's put our numbers in. We know Planck's constant, put that in there, times that by the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Divide that by the wavelength, which in this case is 3.6 times the 10 to the minus 7 meters. And then we should get our energy. Remember, energy is measured in joules. 5.53 times by 10 to the minus 19 joules of energy is required to actually get that electron to, um, uh, to get the, sorry, for the energy to be released. Um, uh, no, it's not for the energy to be absorbed uh, by an atom. Okay, so yeah, let's spit it out. Right, okay, anyway, you know how to do this. Okay, you've seen the equation. Just put your numbers in. Make sure that they're in the right units. That's important, okay, because they might give you, might get you to work at energy in kilojoules to make sure you convert. Okay, right, that's it. That is a an overview of sustainability, energy, and matter for um, the OCRB salters. Um, all these videos, as you can see, they're all free. Um, there's no charge for them. They're all there for you to use to help you get the best grade. All I ask is that you subscribe to my channel. Uh, that's it. So just click on that link, uh, the circle button in the middle, and you can subscribe uh, to, the, um, to the channel and get all the updates as well. Um, and also, just a reminder um, that these slides here, they are available to purchase great value for money, honestly. Um, and they, you can get the whole series at a discount even as well. Great for getting that top grade in chemistry to help you get you to where you need to be, university or wherever you're going to go. Um, if you just click on the link in the description box, you'll be able to get all of them there. But that's it. Bye-bye.